All of us go through times in life that are hard to bear, that are difficult, sometimes bring you to your knees, that sometimes uh, keep you up at night, sometimes gives you indigestion, sometimes affects your emotional well-being, your mental well-being, and even affects your spiritual well-being. In fact, worry is such a powerful thing, it can actually ultimately affect your physical well-being. So what's going on in your head will affect what's going on in your body. And you need to understand that the worry is more lethal than what you're worrying about. You're worrying about something that often can be fixed, with the, but while you're worrying about it, it's doing all kind of damage to you. And the, the difficult thing about being worried, especially when you're a spiritual person, is sometimes you don't even want anybody to know that you're worried about it. You feel obligated to maintain this facade that suggests that nothing bothers you, nothing gets to you. You turn it all over to the Lord in prayer. and All of that's wonderful, all of that's good. But if you live long enough, you will go through some things that will try your heart, that will bother you. You'll find yourself in situations of being overwhelmed and often at the moments that you feel overwhelmed, there's little to nobody to turn to and you find yourself feeling really, really frustrated. Sometimes stress and emotional disorders are silent killers. You don't even realize how bad it is. It's traumatic for your lifestyle. It disrupts everything going on in your life. It's traumatic emotionally because you have a certain amount of fear, you don't want to lose them, you're trying to walk in faith and then you're criticizing yourself when you're not walking in faith and you start going over and over and over and over again in your mind. Stop doing the things that you know are wrong that you could stop doing, right? So it's, it's, a, fairly, it's a fairly limited attempt. First of all, we're not going to say that you know what the good is or what the truth is in any ultimate sense. But we will presume that there are things that you're doing that for one reason or another you know are not in your best interests. There's something about them that you just know you should stop. They're kind of self-evident to you. Other things you're going to be doubtful about. You're not going to know which way is up and which way is down. But there are things that you're doing that you know you shouldn't do. Now some of those you won't stop doing for whatever reason. You don't have the discipline or maybe there's a secondary payoff or you don't believe it's necessary or it's too much of a sacrifice or you're angry or resentful or, or afraid, who knows? So forget about those for now. But there's another subset that you could stop doing. It might be a little thing. Well, that's fine. Stop doing it and see what happens. And what'll happen is your vision will clear a little bit. And then something else will pop up in your field of apprehension that you will also know you should stop doing and that you could stop doing because you strengthened yourself a bit by stopping doing the particular stupid thing that you were doing before. That just puts you together a little bit more. And you could do that repeatedly for, for an indefinite period of time. And, and you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to ever be able to formulate a clear and final picture of what constitutes the truth and the good. But it does mean that you'll be able to continually move away from what's untruth and what's bad. And you know, that's not a bad start. The scripture says, to the pure, all things are pure. And if you're always finding fault, complaining about the traffic, critical of your spouse, may I suggest your window is dirty. The problem is not external, it's internal. You're looking through a tainted filter. At some point, we have to look in the mirror and say, maybe I'm the one that needs to change. Maybe I've developed a habit of seeing what's wrong rather than what's right. Maybe I've trained myself to be negative, disrespectful, hard to get along with. That's why it's so important every morning to put on this fresh new attitude. I'm excited about this day. I don't have to go to work. I get to go to work. I'm grateful for this job. I'm not focusing on what's wrong. Lord, I want to thank you for what's right in my life. You know what you're doing? You're cleaning your windows. Every morning when you wake up, you need to say, Father, thank you for this day. Thank you that you woke me up. Thank you that you gave me air to breathe. Thank you that you surrounded me with favor. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for opportunities. Lord, I'm going to live this day to the full. That's putting on a fresh new attitude. You wipe the slate clean. You let go of yesterday's disappointments, what didn't work out. 
you get your mind going in the right direction I'm going to see the good today I'm going to be kind to somebody I'm going to stay in faith and enjoy this day you can't give away what you don't have now it sounds ridiculous okay but it's more than what meets the ear as you hear this you can't give away what you don't have people who are not good at giving away love can't give away love because they don't have it to give away if I want to give you a dozen oranges I can't give you those dozen oranges unless I go out and pick up 12 oranges someplace otherwise all it is is just empty rhetoric and the same thing is true of virtually everything in your life you can't give away love for others if you don't have love in here to give away if what you have in here is contempt if what you have in here is anger if what you have in here is fear then these are the things you're going to be giving away in your life and I've often thought and I really believe very strongly that uh, there's a law sort of a law in the universe I call it the law of attraction and the law of attraction is one that works like this you get back from the universe from the world what it is that you put out there in the world and if you're putting out there into the world that I am not worthy of attracting something beautiful into my life that the universe will respond back to you with exactly that message and there are people who come to me and who came to me for years when I had a, a, my own a counseling practice and so on and they would say to me um, I just keep attracting the same kind of people the same kind of events the same kind of uh, losers into my life why is that why do I keep doing that and I keep attracting uh, an absence of uh, of abundance I just can't seem to attract abundance into my life I'm always behind the eight ball I'm never getting ahead <clears throat> and I suggested them I said did it ever occur to you that that's the very kind of message you're sending out to the world and out to the universe that the ocean of abundance is there and you can go to that ocean of abundance and you can take a Mack truck and you can fill it up 20 times a day and take it out of there and guess what it doesn't impact at all the ocean of abundance it doesn't even go down a zillionth of an inch it's unlimited or you can go to the same ocean of abundance with a eyedropper and you can just take this much out once a month and say that's all that seems to be available for me and the interesting thing for me is that when people go to this ocean of abundance this uh, unlimited world all that I have is thine it says in the holy books all that I have is thine it's all there for you but if you believe inside that it's limited that you can only get so much that other people are going to get it before you do then you'll find yourself creating that very same thing and the even more interesting part about this you can't give away what you don't have principle is that if your message to the universe is gimme 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 which is a lot of people's message to the universe I want this from you I want that from you please give me this I have to have that that's what their prayer is like that's what their message is you know and they say I want this from the universe gimme 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 the universe's response back to that kind of a uh, mentality is exactly the same the universe will say right back to you over and over again gimme 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 and you'll find yourself never ever arriving but always being in a state of striving always feeling as if you're being neglected never feeling as if you have enough always feeling as if you're being shortchanged because you're constantly under the pressure to give to get back what the universe is demanding from you and the interesting thing about all of this the, the irony of this is that if you shift that and you say to the universe to the world how may I serve how may I serve the universe's response back to you is how may I serve you how may I serve you and it's very intriguing when you take your energy and your attention off of what you are demanding from the world and instead saying what can I give to the world and it's really the 
the basis behind that very famous line of the uh, President uh, John Kennedy's uh, inaugural address. Ask not what your country can do, ask what you can do for your country. And the irony of that is, and I've learned that in my own life, that when I stopped thinking about what was in it for Wayne Dyer and how much could I get, and I began to shift and say, how can I help you? How can I give to you? What can I do for you? And people who write to me, uh, I send them something. When, when I encounter somebody that needs help of some kind, I'm very often just giving that to them. And then I find that it just keeps coming back into my life. And once I shifted that energy off of what can I have into what can I give, it seemed to me that the universe responded back with the very same message. What can I give to you? And the most incredible and wonderful and beautiful abundance has flowed into my life in every way that I can possibly think of. You can't give away what you don't have. So take a look at an inventory of what you do have. How much do you love yourself? How much kindness do you have in you? How much peace do you have in you? How much joy do you have in you? And if you're able to give that away as many times as you can in a given day, watch and see how much more of that continues to show up and come back in your life. Effort has to be incisive in the sense. It should be focused, calibrated. Simply if you make effort, it's foolish effort, isn't it? Just labor is not going to get you somewhere. Right kind of action, the right timing, right place, all this is important, isn't it? So, for all these things to happen, you need perception and intelligence. So that's all you must do in your life. Constantly looking for ways to enhance your perception and your intelligence. Rest will anyway happen. This is one thing that unfortunately humanity is not doing. They are trying to become capable of something. Do not try to become capable of something. Just enhance your perception and intelligence. You know I am a mystic. You are getting it completely wrong. Now this light is falling upon me, reflecting, going through your lenses, inverted image in your retina, you know the whole story, right? Where do you see me right now? Within yourself. Where do you hear me right now? Within yourself. Where have you seen the whole world? Within yourself. Have you ever experienced anything outside of yourself? Everything that ever happened to you, darkness and light happened within you, pain and pleasure happened within you, joy and misery happened within you. Have you ever experienced anything outside of yourself? No. So what I am asking you is, what happens within you, who should determine how it should happen? Hmm? What happens within you, who should determine how this should happen? Somebody else? Definitely you should determine what should happen within this, isn't it? So if you determine what's happening within this, your whole experience of life will be determined by you, nobody else but you, isn't it? The events around you may not be determined by you, but how your experience of life is on this planet is one hundred percent determined by you if you take charge of this. If you leave it loose, just about anybody will determine it. They will, not consciously, they also like you by accident.